NACA did celebrate its 100th um, anniversary this year. NASA Langley actually broke ground two years after that and established as the first NACA lab in 1917. So we do have a, a tremendous history, been working ever since those early years, um, you know, working, solving the most fundamental challenges of flight. We were kind of behind starting uh, out at uh, the, the breakout of World War I and so we kind of got in the game and, and we uh, continued that heritage uh, through World War II as well. So almost every airplane in World War II had some kind of testing done at uh, NASA Langley. It hasn't just been fixed wing aircraft, it's also been vertical flight, rotorcraft work. Actually, we just got recognized as a heritage site for vertical flight by the American Helicopter Society. So industry and government agencies have turned to Langley over the years in times of trouble. One of the first big tests we did in our transonic dynamics tunnel in the 60s saw the propeller whirl flutter problem that had caused the Lockheed Electra a lot of problems and actually a lot of crashes. Energy crisis of the 1970s, winglet research just to revolutionize you know, air transportation. You see those flying on airplanes today, so that's just amazing. Back in the 80s, we developed and tested predictive wind shear radar, which is now mandatory on all airliners. We're continually to, to work on the challenges uh, that exist in our air transportation system. The NASA's ERA program, just tremendous project uh, and some of the technologies we're, we're looking to be more environmentally responsible. Supersonic passenger travel, we're doing a lot of research to shape that uh, sonic boom. You know, the skies are getting more crowded every year, demanding more airspace uh, operations and safety systems. So we're, we're working uh, very hard on helping to transform the current air traffic management system. We're doing crash testing, uh, you know, working on safety. That gantry was built actually uh, for the Apollo program. They did uh, the low G lunar landing simulations there. A lot of use, we've done a lot of crash testing, both for rotorcraft, GA type aircraft, and we're currently using it for human space exploration. We're doing a lot, uh, pretty much all of the Orion crew impact testing, both on land and we actually have modified it since the 60s. Um, so we actually have a water basin under part of it, so we can do uh, impact landing on land as, w as well as the water, so that's pretty impressive. So Isaac uh, allows us to do some really cool manufacturing research. The nice thing about it, it's also the same machine that industry uses for production. A concept for distributed electric propulsion along the wing. Uh, you can transfer from vertical flight to horizontal flight. You can turn off some of the engines when you're in cruise. Very efficient. Tremendous efficiency uh, gains there. All these kind of start with uh, paper studies and then we develop the technologies with the workforce and, and the great ideas we have. And then ultimately we used to fly them. A good example of that is the things we just flew on the eco demonstrator. So it's kind of that, hey, what are some new concepts? What are the new technologies uh, to enable these concepts? And then go out there and fly things. We don't do any of the great things you see us all talking about in a vacuum. I mean, it takes all of us in the community, all the partners out there.